Okay, in this video, we're going to make a schematic to simulate our coupler that we just designed in the last video. So here, I'm going to make a schematic called coupler underscore TB. I add the TB for test bench sometimes. Okay, we're going to go to insert component. We're going to go to a component library. We're going to go to our workspace and we're going to find the hybrid coupler. And we'll place it into the schematic. So here's the symbol view I made. Uh, I had used, uh, I had uh, done some port labels. So I have input, through, coupled, and isolated. I'm now going to go to the simulation S parameter palette. I'm going to add an S parameter simulation object. Remember, we designed this coupler to be a three gigahertz coupler. So I'm gonna do a, a frequency sweep that starts at a center frequency of three gigahertz and has a span of five gigahertz. And we'll go in 0.1 gigahertz steps for the time being. And now I'm gonna add ports to each of the terminals. I'm going to put port or terminal one on input, terminal two on through, terminal three on coupled, and terminal four on ISO. We need grounds for all of these things. Okay, and then we'll connect everything with wires. All right, and we should be ready to simulate now. So let's just go up to this uh, little sprocket here, click simulate. Simulation should run and open up a display window. Now we can check a couple of things immediately. So one, we can put a Smith chart here and ideally all of the ports should be matched to 50 ohms if we design them correctly. So we can add S11, S22, S33, and S44 and plot them. And they should be coming to the center of the chart roughly at three gigahertz. We can put a marker You can see that they're at the center of the chart. The marker here is at 2.9 gigahertz. So we have a pretty good input match right here. Uh, of course, we could have plotted this on a rectangular plot as well. And just looked at the return loss in dBs. And you can see that you have a nice notch in a return loss uh, right around three gigahertz. So it means at least that we got part of the structure of, uh, uh, of the design uh, correct. All right, next we're going to be looking for proof that we have couple uh, coupling and isolation. So here I'm going to add S21 and S31, and we're going to add these in dB. And if we've done this correctly, the power should be split evenly between ports two and three, which means that we would have about a minus three dB loss. And you can see here that indeed we are about minus three dBs down at the design frequency of three gigahertz. So things are looking pretty good here. Now remember also that the phase relationship between S21 and S31 was supposed to be 90 degrees. So let's plot the phase. Okay, when we zoom in here, it's a little bit tricky, but we need to add a marker. We'll add a marker at three gigahertz on S31 and a marker at three gigahertz on uh, 
S21. We'll zoom back in. And we can see that we have uh, phase wrapping here going on. So we have a, a minus 110 degrees. Uh, if we uh, just add 180 to this, this would be at 70 degrees, and 70 degrees is about 89 degrees away from uh, 159. Uh, so indeed, we do have 90 degree phase separation between S21 and 31, which is what we're looking for. And last but not least, this, cu this uh, coupler is supposed to also isolate between port four and port one. So we should have a very small S41 in dBs around three gigahertz. And indeed, you can see that we do have a small S41. Now you can also see from the structure that it looks like it's more perfectly designed at about 2.9 gigahertz. Uh, instead of three gigahertz. Uh, so we could go back in and run an optimization to recenter the design. Uh, this would just uh, involve making the parameters optimizable, uh, and then we could run an optimizer. Let's go ahead and try and do that. So here I'm back in my coupler schematic, and I'm going to go into the variable editor, and I'm going to uh, click on the tune opt stat yield, go to optimization, set this to enabled, and then I'm going to give this a range of about plus or minus 10 percent. So we'll go to 33 to 39. And we'll do the same thing for all the other parameters. All right, so now we've made our schematic optimizable. So we're going to go back up uh, to the top level of the design, and we need to go to our optimization palette. We're going to add an optimization engine. And then we need to add some goals. And our goals are all going to be centered around what the coupler should be doing. So for instance, we know that S21 and S31 should be equal at the target frequency. So I'm going to write an expression to try and make that happen. OK, so here's how I've set up that goal. I'm doing a subtraction of the dB value of S21 uh, minus the dB value of S31. I'm going to try and make the difference between the two close to zero. So I'm going to set a min target of 0.25 dBs and a max of uh, a min target of minus 0.25 dBs and a max of 0.25 dBs. And I'm just going to look at this over a very small frequency range from 2.95 to 3.05 gigahertz. All right, I'm going to write a couple of more goals and then we'll take a look at them. Okay, so I've added a couple of more goals. Uh, I've added a goal for S21. Uh, I want this to be pretty close to minus 3 dBs. We have the goal for the difference of S21 to be uh, pretty, in S31 to be pretty close to zero. I have a goal for S41 to be really small. This is the isolation port. I have a goal for S11 to be really small. This says that the match should be good. And then I have a goal for the phase difference between S21 and S31 to be pretty close to 90 degrees. Uh, here you can see I've unwrapped the phase. Uh, this makes it easier to ensure that we don't have a phase wrap that makes uh, the, the, uh, the, the relationship uh, hard to decipher. All right, for our optimization, we can run a random optimization. We'll run it over 100 iterations, and we'll see if it can do a better job in our design. All right, so I've launched the optimization engine. You can see that it's running, uh, and you can see it quickly found uh, a good design. Uh, it moved the parameters, and they didn't move too much uh, from their original starting values. You can see now that the input matches on all the ports are now centered at 3 gigahertz. The isolation is centered at 3 gigahertz. The coupling is more perfectly centered at 3 gigahertz. And we have a good 90 degree relationship between the phase at 3 gigahertz uh, between uh, S31 and S21. They're 90 degrees out of phase now. 
So all the design goals are satisfied and we have a design we can move forward with when we start doing our EM simulations. And we'll do those in the next video.